Life in the Marine Corps was, it's not like it is in the movies, generally. <laughs> We're not constantly running around blowing things up and, and <laughs> shooting guns, although that is definitely a part of the life. There's a lot of planning. There's a lot of training and not the kind of the big, loud, sexy kind of training all the time. There's a lot of brilliance of the basics and getting the Marines out to to train and maneuver and drive and you know there's a lot of administrative stuff that goes into it there's a lot of there's a lot of disciplinary stuff that goes into it and so it's um it, a lot of the life is mundane any anyone coming out of the military will tell you even people that come out of special forces will say 90% of their time is a bit boring mm -hmm. the other 10% of the time is insanely thrilling uh and that that's kind of why we do it a lot of us feel like we want to defend our country but really most of us it's it's a job and mm -hmm. it's a job that we learn to enjoy it's a job that involves a lot of sacrifices both for us and for our families but it's it's a difficult job to let go of because it gives you a very intense sense of belonging and sense of purpose yeah it can be very difficult for service members to come out of uniform and find a similar sense of purpose in anything that tends to be one of the bigger stumbling blocks that service members face is finding what is that other thing that's going to mean to you what defending your your country meant to you. Wow. And so part of it is just, just finding yourself, finding that second passion. You spend 20 plus years of your life doing one thing. You get very good at that one thing, hopefully. It's difficult to pick up and start again from stage zero at something that you have little or no skills, often the skills that we teach in the military, that they, they don't translate to the civilian sector. And so most of us are tasked with, in our late 30s, 40s, maybe 50s, trying to learn something completely new to do for a career. That's more common now than it used to be, but it's still a pretty daunting task to, to pick up and start over. Um, wow. So advice that I would give I think is to invest in the time and energy that's required to figure out what you need to do next. Way too many veterans kind of assume that they should go and do the, the well-worn path. They should go become a project manager. They should go become a police officer. They could go, you know, should go join up with family and join some family business where they know they can find employment. And that may be required. And those jobs may be exactly what you want. But for most people, I find they sort of fall into a job and they realize fairly quickly that they hate it. Yeah. And the thing that can prevent that in many cases is just taking the time and the energy to go through a process of finding what your next job should be. So you went to Iraq, you went to Afghanistan. Um, how was How was it? What was the, the life lessons from again? Most of that was boring. <laughs> I uh, just because of career timing, I wound up both in Iraq and Afghanistan after most of the shooting war had passed by. There was definitely still danger there. There were still people being shot at and blown up. But it was I got to both of those combat theaters after the majority of the heavy combat had finished. Um, so dealt with. For, for quite a few years, I dealt with a little bit of guilt about that, seeing many of my peers that went over there and were wounded in combat or uh, whatever happened. And yeah, you get, a, you get a little bit of survivor guilt from that, even having spent time there, even deploying to combat zones, you can, you can get caught up in feeling like, well, I missed it and I didn't, you know, I didn't necessarily do my part. So that's a difficult thing to handle. But realistically... I tried, certainly in the, the latter deployment, which was to Afghanistan, I tried to make the most of all, all of the time that I had allotted. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people there that if they had time to burn, they would burn it. They would watch movies, they would play video games, they would sleep. Sometimes they go spend three, four, or five hours a day in the gym, which can be productive or it can be a giant time suck. 
I tried to not only stay in shape and keep myself sharp, but also to take all of the available time and do something productive with it. And I feel like I carried that over the habits that I built there in that combat deployment to Afghanistan. I carried those over and said, this is a framework for life that I can, that I don't burn time. Time is precious. I think that was where I first started to realize that time is the most valuable commodity that you have. And that time, all the time that you get is a gift. Oh. So many of the habits that I developed there, while I don't probably don't work out or, um, or, or, you know, task myself with this is quite the same intensity that I had during that deployment. I definitely took a lot of habits from that deployment and that military lifestyle and carried them forward to just being productive and trying to make the most of my time, even out of uniform. Wow. About being in shape, um, I I follow boxing, MMA. Sometimes I watch okay. some video some videos with the Marine, the Marine Martial Art Program. Yeah, I've never seen something like that. It's so I watch some YouTube videos. Wow, there's nothing like that. It's so intense. Yeah. <laughs> it can be intense. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not personally a martial arts guy. I did enough in the Marine Corps that I was meeting the standard for martial arts. Uh, but I'm much more, I, I enjoy lifting weights, doing CrossFit, running. Um, so yeah, not, not a martial arts guy. Abe Diaz, uh, maybe you could interview him. He's, he's much more of the martial arts guy. I talk to him a lot. There are quite a lot of data analysts that do martial arts. I know that Ken G does, uh, Joe Reese does a lot of the big influencers are, are into it. Wow. Tom Ives, the old, the grand old man of data influencers. He's a, a weightlifter like me. So I'm trying to put up numbers like him. You know, he's like <laughs> 10, 10, 15 years older than me. 